Namaste everyone and welcome to today's one hour and a half vinyasa class. This is going to be a little bit of an introduction to vinyasa. We're not going to do anything too crazy, just get you guys a little bit more of a, what a feel it would be like to do the vinyasa class, introduce you to sun salutations, a little bit of a standing sequence, and then afterwards cooling down and coming into some more restorative poses. So remember, take it at your own time, do it at your own pace, be mindful as you move, and just most importantly, enjoy the class. And also, if you have any injuries at all, if anything is hurting you, if you're getting any sort of pain or discomfort, remember to pull out of the pose, take it a little bit easier, or come into a restorative pose, like a child's pose, or you can even just lay down in Shavasana. Completely up to you, this is your practice. To begin with, we're going to start with a small little grounding meditation just to bring us into the moment, bring us into the room, and bring our awareness a little bit more into our bodies. So take a few seconds, be in a seated position anywhere on your yoga mats, cross-legged, wherever you like. Comfort is key here. And then when you feel like you have the right time, close your eyes and just begin to breathe. Take a few deep inhalations and exhalations. And allow yourself to become centered in the moment. Breathing deeply in and deeply out. Let's do this three more times. Breathing deeply in and deeply out. Two more times. Deeply in and deeply out. One final big breath in. Take a deep inhale. Hold this breath. Just for five, four, three, two, and one. Release and relax. We're just going to take a few moments for your mind to settle. You might have meditated before this, or you might not have. But now we're just coming back into the moment and letting any thoughts just pass on by. For a few moments of silence. In this silence, feel free to make your intention for today's practice. It can be something as simple as just relaxing, being present, feeling motivated, feeling inspired. Let it be an intention that you can take on throughout your day. And while you're sitting in the silence, start to establish a strong breath. Let your breath be your anchor point throughout this practice. We will later start to introduce an ujjayi breath. But for now, just create some sort of breathing where you feel the depth of your breath. Where you feel each inhalation and each exhalation grounding you into your body. Feel the strength and the energy being created by this breath. 
And remember that throughout the whole practice, it is always there for you. And so is this space of silence, of peace, and of awareness. And like I said before, one of the main things we want to do with our practice is cultivate enjoyment. So just bring a little smile to your face and let this practice be something that fills you up internally and externally. Beautiful. We're going to slowly, slowly start to open up our eyes. Finding ourselves in whatever room we are in. Feeling the yoga mat beneath us. Just finding yourself back into this reality. Getting ourselves ready to move. We're going to start off with a warm-up. Just going through all the joints starting from the seated position. So feel free to, if you've been sitting with one leg on top, just swap it over. And then from here, we're going to begin with small, subtle movements to bring ourselves into greater movements later. So remember, warm-up is always key. And your body might ask for things that you want. Also feel free to add this into your warm-up. And we're going to begin slowly. We're going to start with the neck. So simply just start to follow and watch as my neck moves, you move yours. We're going to start with making some figure eights. Super simple. So imagine that your chin is a paintbrush and you're drawing an upside down eight or an infinity sign. Good. Nice and easy. And again, these movements get bigger and bigger as we flow. Good. And we're going to start by bringing our left ear more towards our left shoulder. Get a little bit of a deeper stretch here. Inhale. And exhale back to neutral. Inhale. Exhale right ear to right shoulder. Deeper stretch here. We're not doing any pressing right now. Just natural body movements. Inhale. And exhale back to neutral. Good. We're going to get the arms involved in the shoulders, but first we're going to just start by rolling the shoulders, keeping our hands on our knees and just moving the shoulders forward in this nice rolling motion and back again. Beautiful. Switching it up again, moving forward. And back. Amazing. Now we're going to get the arms involved. So we're going to inhale, raise the hands up. Stretch as high as you can. You can make your hands into whatever shape you like. They can be prayer. They can be index fingers pressed together. We're just getting a deep stretch here. Inhale. Now, as we exhale, I'm going to bring my left hand down beside me. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm just going to slowly start to stretch the side body. Again, reaching with this right arm. If you want, you can look up. Otherwise, just keep your twisty in front of you, your gaze point. Inhale here. And exhale, we return back to center. Inhale, reach up, and now we're going to go through the other side. So exhale, right hand down, left arm stretches over, deep stretch, as deep as you can go. Breathing, let your inhalation and your exhalation really help emphasize the stretch in the side body. It's all over here. Inhale, exhale, back to center. Good. Inhale, raise the hands up, and now we're going to do a small little forward fold. Exhale, folding forward, reaching down, looking more towards the ground, and just crawling 
your hands forward on your mat. As far as you can go, relaxing the neck. Remember to breathe. Good, now we're gonna crawl over to the one side. So we're gonna crawl our hands over to the right. Get another deep stretch of the side body. Reach with the left. Inhale. And exhale, crawl back to the center. Resetting. A few more moments here. Inhale. Exhale, we crawl over to the left. Stretching out that side body, getting it nice and deep into the torso. Just warming up from the core here, getting everything stretched out. Inhale, exhale, back to center. Take one final deep stretch forward. And slowly, slowly start to walk your hands back up. Good job. Once again, swap your legs, just to make sure that one leg isn't getting too uncomfortable. We're gonna do some spinal rotations, and then we're gonna move on to our hands and knees. So again, holding on to the knees, you're just gonna start going to the right first. So bringing your chest forward, and just rotating. Nice and easy, nice circumduction of the lower back, and just moving. Seven more times. And allow these circles to deepen. So maybe you start soft, but now they're getting bigger and bigger. Inhaling. And exhaling. Whatever feels natural to you. Three more times here. Remember that breath. Two more times. Last big circle. Bring it back to neutral. Relax, take a second, breathe. And then we're gonna to go to the other side. So inhale, chest forward, and we're moving to the left. If you went to your left already, just go to your right. It's not so important that we remember right and left, it's just important that we do both sides. This is what's important. Keep on moving, side motion. Seven more circles here. Try and really be mindful about this movement as well. It's a nice one to be aware of what is actually happening. So your core is being slightly engaged, your shoulders slightly engaged. Three more movements. Two. And one. Bring it back to center. Inhale. And release. Okay, so now we're gonna almost move on to our hands and our knees. We're just gonna come into Baddha Konasana first. So just bring the feet together, or butterfly pose. Work those feet a little bit up. Give your feet a nice little massage. Breathe. And this isn't too much about the stretch yet. We don't wanna go into some deep stretching. For now, we're still warming up. So we can start to flap our knees. And it doesn't matter how close your heels are towards your groin. But if you feel like you want to get a deeper opening, you can just bring your heels closer towards your groin. Just flap the wings of your butterfly just for 10 more breaths. Relax, take it easy. And again, prepare your mind and body to go into some more stronger movements. A good warm-up is always important, even before you start your sun salutations. It's good to make sure your joints and your muscles and your mind awareness has all been warmed up. All right, bring your hands onto your knees, bring them up to your chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze, point the toes. Beautiful. Hold for three, two, and one, cross the feet over, and we're gonna roll into our tabletop, nice and gently. <clears throat> tabletop position. If you have any sensitivity on the knees, just bring a cushion and put it underneath your knees, or you can double up with your mats, whatever just makes your knees more comfortable. 
As for the position itself, when we're going into tabletop, it's a good place to start learning how to set up our arms for any forearm or any wrist-based or shoulder-based movements. So any of our downward-facing dog, upward-facing dogs or planks, even our chaturangas, this is our base, right? So we're going to learn how to set this up. First things that you have to do, bring your hands, make them parallel underneath your shoulders, okay? Fingers spread wide. You want to make a little bit of an imprint in your mat. Depends what mat you have, but a lot of the time you can feel you're pressing into your mat. Then you're going to create a slight turn outward with your fingers. This little L shape that we have is going to slightly turn outward to create what we call torque. The torque that we're creating is going to make it much easier for your arm to support itself and for the arm to support the rest of your body and torso. From here, if we have any hypermobility of the elbows, I want you already to start micro-bending slightly. If you don't have hypermobility of the elbows, just stay with your straight arms, okay? So hypermobility, if it goes past the point of posture, so if the elbow is too far out away from the wrist or the shoulders, you want it to be in line. Good. Then from here, we're also going to learn how to press up into our back because we don't want anything that looks like this. We don't want to drop into our shoulders or droop. So we've got our hand alignment. I want you to press up into your shoulders, right? So I'm not doing a spinal wave. I'm just pressing up into the shoulders. Good. Nice and simple. Try and get your shoulder blades away from each other. This is the idea, okay? By pressing into the ground, you should feel that your palms hands, everything is really strong and you've got this slight turn in of the elbows. Good. Breathe for a few seconds here. As for the legs, <clears throat> we just want to make sure that the knees are parallel for now and comfortable. Toes untucked. All right. That's just for our tabletop position. Now we're going to play with some spinal waves and then we're going to also play with a little bit of some shoulder mobility just to get us ready for chaturangas and downward facing dogs. So to begin with, we're going to do some cat cows. Super, super easy motion here. We're going to inhale and I'm going to drop my belly, open up my chest, allow for a little bit of a lower back bend, raise the chin up and then on my exhale, I'm going to reverse that motion and curve the chest in. So bring the navel towards my chest, squeezing up the abdomen, pressing through the arms. Again, opening up through the shoulder blades. Inhale, and slowly open up again. Chin reaching up, chest opening. Beautiful, dropping the navel. Exhale, curving the spine, sucking the navel in. I'm going to do this three more times. Inhale. Opening up through the chest. What we're doing here is just getting spinal mobility. Exhale. Tucking the navel in. We're also learning what muscles we want to remain engaged when we do the rest of our practice. Inhale. Drop the navel. Open up. Try not lean too far back. Try to keep yourself here. Center. Exhale, rolling, tucking in the tailbone. Also learning a little bit of that tailbone tuck. So instead of me being here, I'm here, tucking in that tailbone. Two more times, inhale, open up. Exhale, rolling in. Again, we're also learning how to move with our breath. Inhale. Open up, exhale, closing in, and slowly release. Good. The final thing we're going to do is just a little bit of a shoulder mobility exercise. Really good to get the shoulders engaged and to know what that feels like. Again, super simple. If your hands are hurting right now, then just take a few seconds to rest like this. Otherwise, you can do it with me or follow on after me once I'm done explaining. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that same thing I said before, press through the shoulders, and then we're also just gonna drop. All right, so we're gonna allow for the drop. We're gonna control it, so press up, 
and drop. And you see my tailbone also automatically tucks in. This isn't a cat-cow, it's similar, but we're just playing with the motions of the shoulders. And once you've got this movement okay, where you're allowing your shoulders to drop in and press them out, then you can start to move a little bit and see what it feels like to play with this motion, and dropping the shoulders and rolling them out. And let your neck be nice and heavy. You don't have to be looking up at me. Once you've found the motion, try to create these waving motions through the shoulders. Beautiful. Let's just do it for another 10 seconds. We don't have to count anything, just 10 more seconds. Five, four, have a little bit of a play around, two, and one. Bring your knees together, keep your toes on top, and just gently rock down into an active child's pose. So reach your arms forward, relax the neck, breathe. Just to relax a little bit in the wrists. Two, and one. Walk your hands back up. Remain in what we call hero's pose. And we're gonna do just a little bit of some work on the wrists, just to again, prepare them for any sort of arm balances or anything that's gonna be working with our upper body. So we're gonna do the reverse of what we've already been doing. So we've warmed them up this way, now we're gonna warm them up that way. So super easy, bring your fingertips face behind you, and then just slowly press the backs of your hands into the mat beneath you at your side. And then just move from side to side, super easy. You can walk them forward, bring pressure into both sides, move a little bit back and forth. Really nice free motion just to help get our wrists a little bit more warmed up and stretched out, just for three more seconds. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to switch it. We're going to go to the side like this. So you're going to bring your hands next to you, and same thing to the side. Fingertips to the side. Just a few seconds here. And then one, interlace the fingers, raise it up nice and high. Exhale, fold forward, walk your hands slowly forward into this tabletop position. Now we're going to tuck our toes, press into the ground like we've been practicing. I want you to round through those shoulders, press into, open up the shoulder blades. With the toes tucked, you're going to raise the knees off of the ground and come to a downward facing dog. And this very gently, just walk it out. So walking it out just means bringing your heels to the ground, just like this. Super simple. One thing that I want you to avoid, we're not doing a plank, because this is not what we're doing. We're not going too deep. We're just coming to a very subtle stretch here. Try and keep your body and your hip in a nice alignment. Try to keep those shoulders same that we spoke about before, shoulder blades away from each other. And the drifty just down at the ground. They're just working those heels down, keeping the knees bent. Spend a few seconds on each side, whatever feels good to you. And then looking between your hands, gently start to walk your feet forward. <clears throat> Coming into our first forward fold. From here, if you find that you're struggling to reach the ground, this is where our blocks come in. You can just place your blocks here and rest with your hands in the blocks. If you find like you can reach the ground, you don't need the blocks. But remember, right now we're also bending a little bit in our knees, just for now. Just to allow for some subtle stretching of the back fascia. And to gently start to open up our body. We don't want to move too fast. So making small little movements is always good. If you want to, you can also grab your elbows, relax your head, and just rock from side to side. Mm 
We're going to do a very subtle little spinal twist. So we're going to place our left hand down to the middle of the mat. Open up through the right arm. Inhale. Next, right arm down. Left arm up. Inhale. Exhale, left arm down. Right arm up. Inhale. Drift is up at that right arm. Gaze point. Exhale. Inhale, left arm up. And exhale, left arm down. Taking a nice deep bend in the knees. We're going to inhale, slowly roll up. Keep your head heavy, keep your arms heavy. Press in through your knees and your legs. And slowly tucking in that tailbone. Very gently. Rolling ourselves up. Bit. Let your head be the last thing that comes up. And we're going to take a few seconds in finding our mountain pose and just relaxing a little bit. So <clears throat> come to the front of your mat, bring your feet hip width apart. So it depends mostly on your knees. For some of us who might have knees that go inside or go outside, what we want our knees to be is facing the fronts of the mat because our knees are what bends forward. So making sure that your knees are facing the fronts of your mat. If this means that your feet are like this, it's okay as long as your knees are forward. So knees forward, knees underneath the hips, <clears throat> ankles underneath the knees. We're gonna to start to make a really strong mountain pose now. So squeeze through the feet. Engage through the kneecaps, pulling the kneecaps up and then slowly letting them go, tucking in the tailbone, so giving the small little press in with the glutes, engaging slightly through the lower abdominal muscles, inhaling up through the chest, rounding the shoulders back, hands at the side, chin slightly lifted, and breathe. Mountain pose, Tadasana. I want you to take five deep, strong breaths in this pose. Feel how light you feel in this pose. If you're not feeling light, then you might need to do some adjustments. You should feel no extra pressure anywhere else in this posture. So just relax, but remain engaged. Breathe. Three more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Okay, we're going to move on to our sun salutation. So we're going to do sun salutation A and sun salutation B from the Ashtanga series and include that in our vinyasa. We're going to do a very, very simplified version of A to begin with and then slowly start to build up. If you reach a certain space in your sun salutation where you feel like it's uncomfortable, where you don't want to do any more, keep it at the level that suits you, right? This is not a game, it's not a competition, there's no failure. It's just about doing what feels good for your body and bringing balance to your body. So with that being said, we're going to start off super simple and this is going to be our baseline. From this baseline, you can grow. But it's always good to return to the baseline if you're feeling pain or discomfort in the body. We're also not going to go too fast. And we're going to break it down pose by pose to begin with. So let's begin. <clears throat> Starting from our mountain pose, feeling that engagement. We're going to take a deep inhale, raise the hands up. Exhale, forward folding at the hips, micro bending slightly in the knees if you need to. Inhale to a straight back, maybe lifting the fingertips up over the shins, up over the knees, and exhaling back down. Now we're just going to step back into a plank for now. So coming into a nice little plank. We're going to focus on our plank for a second. So remember how our arms and our hands should be. Right, the little L shape pointing towards the front of the mat, squeezing at the glutes, keeping our toes tucked, pressing through the shoulders. Holding that plank, engaging the core, inhale. And here we're going to 
Start with the knees, chest, chin, and then we're going to go to a chaturanga. So first, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, drop the knees. Exhale, chest and chin. Super simple. And here we're going to inhale, slide forward, come into a baby cobra. So my belly is completely on the mat. I'm going to release my hands. I'm going to inhale, look up. My toes can be pointed. I'm squeezing at the glutes to get the extra lift through the chest. Beautiful. Inhale here. Exhale, place the hands down. You're going to press up. It's good to keep these elbows tucked in. You don't want any elbows splaying out. Elbows tucked in, pressing up. Inhale. Coming into a tabletop, tucking the toes. <clears throat> Rolling into that downward facing dog. Breathing here, five breaths. Again, remember what your downward facing dog looks like. You can still walk it out for now. We're not doing any static dogs yet. Breathe, just make sure that your spine is postured, that your shoulders are away from your ears, that your arms are engaged. Two and one. Okay, we're gonna slowly come back to plank. So I want us to practice chaturanga. So from this plank pose, pressing up through the shoulders again. Now we're gonna try for chaturanga. If chaturanga isn't suiting you today, then we're just gonna do knees, chest, chin. So for chaturanga, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap these elbows in. Inhale. As you exhale, you're going to come to a 90 degree angle. A little bit of a push up. From here, you're going to drop the hips and inhale to an upward facing dog. Or cobra. So cobra, our knees are down on the mat. My elbows are slightly bent. My chest is open. For upward facing dog, I press the back of my feet against the mat. I lift my knees. I engage my glutes and I raise my pelvis off of the mat. Inhale. Exhale. We're going to roll back into our downward facing dog. Good. Now when we come into a static downward facing dog, find whatever works for you. Again, make sure that your hands aren't too far, your feet aren't too far, parallel apart. Bending the knees if you need to for now, or if you can, you can straighten your legs and come into your downward facing dog, heels down. But the heels down isn't important. What's important is you keep your posture and your shape. Breathe. Two. And one. Looking between the hands again, we're just gonna walk ourselves back up towards our hands. Making sure that our feet are right where they began. Nice and parallel. A little micro bend in the knees if you need to. If those hamstrings are tight. I'm gonna inhale, half lift. Exhale, fall forward. Bending at the knees. Inhale, raising yourself up. Reaching up nice and high towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, release them to the side. Breathe. Take a few seconds to breathe. This is the basic of what our sun salutation A is going to look like. Right? We're not going to do two knees, chest, chin, and chaturanga. We're going to just do whatever you choose. And then we're going to try and do it in a nice flowing, controlled, mindful motion. That's going to be our next practice. So for the next sun salutation that we do, try and do it with a little bit more flow. Choose what works for you. And remember, if anything is hurting, just bring it back a variation. So if upward facing dog or cobra is hurting, do baby cobra. If chaturanga is beyond your control right now, do knees, chest, chin. Even if downward facing dog is too much, do a tabletop. All right? Beautiful. Let's begin. Mountain pose, tadasana. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, still stepping back. Plank pose. Plank. Inhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Your choice. Inhale here. Exhale, roll back into tabletop or into downward facing dog. 
three breaths. Inhale, exhale. Find strength in this posture. Inhale, exhale. One more breath. Inhale, exhale. Good. Inhale, look between the hands. Again, stepping ourselves forward. All right, so now we're maybe doing it in one big step. Inhale to so this half lift. Exhale down. So for our half lift, just to add, you can either just look up and come down, or you can inhale, come up into a full Ardo Tanasana and come down again. It is your choice. As long as your spine isn't doing this, and your spine is postured and straight. Good. So from our half lift, we bend the knees and inhale. We gently roll ourselves up, reaching up nice and high. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hands to the side. Good. All right, let's get a little bit more flow going. So Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, forward fold. Uttanasana, folding at the hips, keeping the spine straight, bending at the knees if you need to. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Exhale down, still stepping back, plank. From our plank, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in your downward facing dog. Three breaths. Two. And one. Inhale, looking between the hands. Again, stepping. Try step forward with the opposite foot now that you used last time. You didn't remember, just remember for last, for the next time you do it. Holding onto the elbows, getting a little bit of traction. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down, bending at the knees. Inhale, raising yourself up all the way. Exhale, hands to heart center. And inhale, release. I'm going to do it two more times. The next two, I'm going to teach you a variation of the jump back, just because you might want to try it. Again, this is something that can be quite difficult. So if you're not getting it at first, it's okay, but I want to give you the option. So we're going to have two options, step back or jump back. And for the jump back, there's also a version where you can take two hops. So this is what I'm going to teach you. So again, we start off nice and simply, super normal, Tadasana. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, fold forward at the hips, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Now exhale, we're gonna do the jump back first with two hops. So my fingertips come down and I jump back once and twice. Super easy, plank. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, breathe here, three breaths. Two, one. Inhale, looking between the hands. Now jumping forward is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna do this with the hops. So I'm gonna jump forward once and then twice. Good, half lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lifting up all the way. Exhale. Hands to the side. Good. We're going to do it one more time. Now, if you want to try the full jump back, you can. And then after that, I'm going to give you a sun salutation to run on your own. But let's start again with the jump back. So, everyone, mountain pose. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. All right, so now we're going to go for the full jump back. Or you can try for just two, whatever is working for you. Exhale. Jump back into a chaturanga. So catch yourself in that chaturanga. Inhale, slide forward into that upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Remember guys, it's your choice what you want to do. So when you do your hop backs, you can hop back into a plank. 
But when you're doing the full jump back, you want to jump back into a chaturanga. And if none of these are appealing to you, then just practice the original one that we did with the knees, chest, chin. Good. Now the full hop back. So we're going to bend the knees just to get a little bit of momentum. Look between the hands. We're going to hop up. And land nice and softly. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down. Bending at the knees. Inhale, rolling ourselves all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Releasing them at their side. Mountain pose. Good. And we're going to do one more. The last one, I'm going to do without demonstrating because I want you guys to do it on your own. So I'm just going to speak towards the camera and you guys are going to hear the cues as I say them. Okay? So, find yourself into your mountain pose. Good. Inhale, hands go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or jump back into plank or chaturanga. Inhale, knees, chest, chin, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hold your downward facing dog for three more breaths. Two. One. On your next inhale, you're going to bend the knees, look between the hands, step, jump, or hop forward in between the hands, come to that halfway lift, exhale down again, inhale, raise yourself up into your full stretch upwards, and exhale, hands to heart center, and inhale, hands to the side. Beautiful. Mountain pose, relax. Good job, everyone. It's good to do it on your own without visuals so that you just get it in your head a little bit. Breathe. Now we're going to do one round of Sun Salutation B. This is a little bit more different. We're going to incorporate Sun Salutation A and we're just going to add a few more things. Okay? So just one round of this. We'll do more of this in the classes to come, but I just want to introduce you guys to it nice and slowly. Okay? So super slow, super easy to maintain. For this one, our mountain pose is going to be a little bit different. We're going to start our mountain pose with our feet together. Okay, this is that we can go into with katanasana or chair pose. So, with our feet together, still maintaining that same engagement, that same posture, hands at the side. Now, on the inhale, we're going to squeeze our knees in, squeeze our feet together, and we're going to drop. Right? I'm not bending at my ankles, I'm bending at my knees, and I'm keeping my tailbone tucked. I'm going to drop, hands come down. As soon as I touch the ground, I inhale, sweep the hands up, chair pose. Exhale, fourth fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, down again. Again, step or hop back into plank or chaturanga, your choice. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, immediately we're going to inhale, raise that right leg up, and exhale, step it between the hands. Drop the left heel down and turn it to 45 degrees. If you need to take a wider step with that back foot, do so. From here, you're going to press up through your chest, bend that right knee, straighten that back leg, turn the hips forward, keep that tailbone nice and strong, glutes engaged. Knee bent to 90 degrees, core engaged, shoulders forward, hands up, however you like, inhale here, and breathe in warrior one, Vira Badrasana A. Press with the outer edge of that back foot, bend with that front knee. If this is uncomfortable for your shoulders for any reason, hands to the heart center. Hold for five. Four, three, two, and one. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend that knee, bring the hands back down, stepping that right foot back. Plank, again, your vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> now to do the other side. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, stepping in between the hands. Same measurements, dropping that right heel, finding what feels good for you. Back foot at a 45 degree angle, lifting up through the chest, bending that front knee, turning the hips inward. Shoulders forward, core engaged, torso postured, hands lifted, Virabhadrasana A. Again, if it's hurting your shoulders, you can bring your hands to your chest, whatever works for you. Hold here for five breaths. Where we want to be feeling this engagement in the front leg, slight stretch in the back hip, right? Keeping it forward, pressing with the outer edge of that back foot. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. Last breath. Beautiful, very good. Inhale, straighten that front leg. Exhale, fold forward over that front foot. Step it back, plank. One more time. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now we're going to hold this downward dog for our final five breaths. Let's make it a nice strong one. See now maybe you can bring your heels more closer to the ground. Stretching out through the shoulders. Pressing up through the pelvis and the tailbone. Three more breaths. Breathe. Relax. Two more breaths. Good. And then on your final breath, take a nice big inhale, bend the knees, step, hop, walk forward, feet together. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down, we're going to raise up into that chair pose again. Inhale, swiping at the floor, chair pose. Exhale, straightening the knees. Inhale, hands to heart center. And exhale, hands to the side. Let's come back into our Tadasana. A mountain pose. Breathe here. Just take five breaths. So remember that whole little sequence that we did for next time. We're going to be doing something very similar each time and we're just going to add on to it. But for now we're going to go into a standing sequence. But two more breaths. Relax. And first thing we're going to do, shift our weight onto our left leg. So it's going to start with a little bit of balancing. We're going to start to gently lift that right knee up. So making sure that your foot is nice and straight line, that you're using that whole left leg, pressing up through the hips, that you're not dropping into your side, keeping your spine postured. You're just going to start first just by raising the knee slightly, pointing the toes and seeing if you can lift that leg up. Good, super easy. Breathe. Now we're gonna swing that knee over. So we're trying to get this rotation of the hip. Swing that knee over, point it down, and place it down behind you. And then you can squeegee your foot a little bit further away. Back foot, we want it to be at a 90 degree angle. So we're pointing that back foot towards the side of the mat. The front knee is bending and the front foot is pointed towards the front of the mat. Breathe. Hips opening slightly, torso in the same direction as the hips. So hips facing the long side of the mat. Opening up with the arms, relaxing the shoulders. Virabhadrasana B or warrior two. My drishti is either forward Right, my left hand. Things to look out for here, the knee not being bent enough or the knee being too bent. So make sure that your knees either a little bit before 90 degrees or at 90 degrees. So you can just see your left toe on the right side of your knee. Shoulders not tense, 
shoulders relaxed. I'm going to hold you for five more breaths. Four, three, squeezing at the outer edges of the foot, really making sure you're opening through that hip, keeping your core engaged. Two, and one. Inhale, exhale, you're going to bring this left elbow gently down to the left knee. I'm not resting on it, it's just here for support. The right arm is going to sweep underneath, so I'm not doing this, I'm sweeping and I'm raising it up to open the chest into Parsva Konasana or intense side angle stretch pose. Look to that right arm. Hold for five, four. Again, I can remove this hand at any time, so this isn't my supporting hand. Two side stretches happening. And one, inhale, bring it back, straighten that front leg. Now we're going to open up with the hands, reach forward, so my legs stay in this triangle shape. Reach forward, inhale, and exhale, drop that left hand, coming into three corners on our triangle pose. And then I'm pressing this left hand on the inside of my left calf, or I'm reaching all the way down. But if you reach down and your hip turns in, draw it back even if the hand lifts. If you need a block, you can also put a block down to help keep you into this nice side stretch. But try and use your core to keep you here. Your core might be a little bit sensitive or weak at the moment, so you might need to use a block, but ideally we want to be able to hold ourselves here. Two more breaths. Inhale and exhale, reaching ourselves back. Beautiful. Inhale here, exhale, we're going to windmill our hands down, turn onto that back toe, coming into a nice little lizard pose by bringing that back foot, I mean the front foot, to the front of the mat, a little bit more to the side, placing the hands on the inside of that front leg, and breathe here, all for five, Four, three, two, and one. Step that left leg back. Plank pose. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Two. And one. Looking between the hands, bending the knees, stepping or hopping or floating forward. Halfway lift. Exhale down. Inhale, raising yourself up all the way. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hands to the side, feet parallel. Take a second before we do the other side. So just so you guys can get a good view of the other side, I'm going to do it facing that way. Good. So from here, same, same. You're also going to get a different angle of this, which is great. Is everyone ready? We're going to again just shift our weight into our right leg now. Bring up the left knee. Slowly, slowly. See if you can hold your weight into your right leg. Once you've got that, you're going to bring that left leg around, point it down, and squeegee it back. Bending that right knee, back foot, 90 degree angle. The alignment is either back heel to front heel, or middle of the back foot to front heel. If you need to take a wider stance, this is okay too. It depends on how tight you are in your hips. So remember, judge based on your body type, not on mine or what other people tell you. Judge on what you're feeling inside. Front knee bent 90 degrees. Hips towards the side of the mat. Torso towards the side of the mat. Shoulders towards the side of the mat. Raise the hands up. Inhale. Exhale. Deepen into the posture. Virabhadrasana 2. Warrior 2. Drishti. Front hand. 
or looking in front of me. Whatever doesn't hurt your neck. Five more breaths here. Relaxing through the shoulders, feeling that grounding through the feet, pressing through the outer edge of the back foot. Two. And one. Inhale. Exhale. Now we're going to bring that right elbow down into the right knee and swish that left hand so we can get a nice side stretch. Opening through the chest. Looking up towards that left hand. Breathing here. Again, I'm not resting in this arm. My shoulder isn't dipping. I'm keeping myself up with my torso. Hold for five. Four. Three, two, and one. Swing your hand back, straighten that front leg. Arms open nice and wide. We're going to go into Trikonasana now. So same thing. Reach forward, inhale, exhale, drop the right hand, press it against the side of the front foot. Open up through the left. You can look at your left hand, or you can look forward, or you can go all the way to the ground, whatever helps you. Trikonasana for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, bring yourself back. Exhale, windmilling the hands down, stepping that right foot to the outside of the mat. Bring the hands inward. Nice little lizard pose. Breathing here for five breaths. Four, three, two, and one. Right foot back, plank, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Final down dog for five breaths. Four, three, two, and one. Looking between the hands, bending the knees, stepping, hopping, floating forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale down, inhale, rolling yourself up all the way, and exhale, coming into your mountain pose. Breathing here, five breaths just to relax, just to re-stabilize, re-neutralize, and rebalance. Just three more breaths. Alrighty, I'm going to do one final little balancing before we go into some more restorative stuff. So, same thing we did last time. We're going to shift our weight onto our left leg. Find it so that we can balance, squeeze the glutes, be engaged. If you have any hyperextension in the knee like I do, then you just take a small little micro bend just to make sure that your leg is stable but being held by the muscles, not by the joint. So bend slightly and then shift that weight over to the left side. Slowly start to bring up your right leg. This is number one, right? This is the first thing we want to do. Once you find that this is easy enough for you, you can start trying to go into what we call tree pose or vriksasana. Tree pose has a few variations. Variation one, you open up your knee to the side, hips facing forward, and you just bring your foot on your ankle. Super simple. Still try to stay balanced on this leg, but the foot is on the ankle. You can also place the foot on the calf. And the final variation we have is we place the foot on the inside of the leg. Release the hands, press slightly to open, and you can bring your hands to your chest. Keep your drishti focused on some point that is fixed in front of you, just to keep your balance strong. And we're going to hold here just for 
five more breaths. You can do this, four, very slow, very deep breaths. Three. Two. And one. We're gonna release with a lot of care. So release the hands, release the foot, point the toes, bring the knees in, and step it down back to our mountain pose. Breathe. <sighs> one more second before we do the other side. And same thing, same process. So we're going to shift the weight onto our right leg. Now you might find a difference in legs, perfectly normal. That's why we do these balancing exercises. That's why we do yoga cross laterally so that both sides get the same amount. That can we can recorrect those balances. So shifting over to the right side, good, squeezing at the glute, beautiful. And then slowly start to lift up the left leg, point the toes down, bend the knee. Once this feels good, we can again practice our variations: ankle, calf, and then finally. And the inside of the right thigh and the chest find your drishti find your balance relax everything that doesn't need to be working so relax your shoulders and just balance four more breaths three Two, and one. Slowly release. Again, gently with the leg, pointing the toes, placing it down, and coming into a mountain pose one more time. All right, now we're gonna get into some more stretching. The body should be a bit warm now, so we can go into some deeper stretches. First stretch, we're going to do a nice big stretch upward, upward salute stretch. So again, hands however you like in a namaste position, fingers together, or even open wide. Whatever works for you, stretching up nice and big through the back, opening the shoulders, keeping the tailbone tucked in. Slight back bend, breathe for five, four, three, two and one and we're going to go into a nice forward fold so exhaling into that deep forward fold bending the knees holding onto the elbows relaxing the head and go into a nice deep forward fold to deepen the forward fold you can hold onto your big toes with your middle and index finger and pull yourself closer to the ground, elbows out to the side. Nice and easy. If you're struggling to reach the ground, again, use your blocks. Let this help you. So your blocks can be here in front of you, they can be here at your side, they can be on the inside, they can be even on the outside to help pull you closer. As long as you're not curving through the spine and keeping this fold at the hips, you should feel it in the hamstrings. Three more breaths here. Two. And one. Slowly release. We're going to step back nice and slow into our plank. Good. Now we're going to hold plank ten breaths. This is going to be one of the last little strong exercises we're going to do. Keep the heels up. Pressing through the shoulders, fingers grip nice into the mat, hold. Nine more breaths, squeezing the glutes, making sure that your shoulders are above the wrists. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Dropping the knees, untucking the toes. I'm resting in a child's pose just for a few seconds. Breathing here.
Now from your child's pose, I just want you to watch. You can have a quick look. I'm going to show you our final pose that we're going to do today. This is just more for fun because I know a lot of you will be interested in doing it. And it's going to be just a little breakdown of crow pose. So we're going to play with that for maybe two to three minutes and then go from there. So first for crow pose, making sure the wrists are nice and ready. So again, while you're waiting and watching, so don't do while I'm doing, just watch. And then I'll give you time to do by yourself. While you're waiting, you can just rest your wrists by bringing your fingertips back and moving from side to side. So for crow, the hand placements is exactly the same as we've been having through our tabletops, downward dogs and planks. Wrapping the elbows, pressing through the shoulders. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to come up onto my toes. From here we're going to have two variations that I'm going to show you, okay? Um, I'm going to show you variation one where you bring your knees on the outside of your elbows and use this squeeze to keep you in. And variation two where you bring your knees on the inside. Okay, this inside one is going to be a little bit difficult for me because I'm sweaty and when you're sweaty it slips off really really easily so I'm going to practice this one more for myself but it's just good to know that there are two variations. Variation one, bringing the knees up, looking forward so your gaze helps you just look at a little triangle point that you've created with your hands. Here's the base of the triangle and then there's the point that we want to aim for. If you're scared about hitting your head place a block here. If you can't get enough lift in your hips, stand on a block like this. This will give you extra height. Okay? Whatever works for you. So, hands gripped into the mat. I'm going to bring my knees just over my elbows and start to squeeze. And I'm just going to look forward. And it's a forward motion, not an upward motion. So I'm just looking forward, squeezing my knees in. And coming back. This is level one, okay? So you don't have to lift your toes up yet. Just squeezing in, going forward, and coming back. Level two is we're going to lift one foot up at a time. So I'll move forward, lift one foot up, come back. Move forward, lift one foot up, come back. Now we're going to do both feet at the same time, alternating feet. This is level three before we go into the full crow. So knees together, forward, one up, and I'm swapping. Doop, 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 and I'm back. Super nice and simple. Take a few seconds, rest the wrists. So everyone goes through these prep rounds because it's good to learn them when you're helping to teach others and just for yourself to have alternate things to practice. All right, so going into full crow. Elbows wrapped, knees squeezing, looking forward. I'm moving slightly forward and just letting my toes come up naturally then bringing my toes together, pressing down into the ground. Elbows are creating a little bit of a ledge. I'm holding for five, four, Three, two, and one. Slowly coming down. Okay? Super, super simple. And then the last one, I'm going to just show you the different variation with the knees tucked into the triceps. I don't like this one too much because it also hurts a little bit in the triceps, but it is another variation that you can try. So same thing, except my knees are now tucked in. Lifting up, moving forward. Bring the toes up. So it's similar. I get a little bit more height with my hips, but it's harder to control and it's very, very close for the knees slipping off of the, the arms there. So take a few seconds, practice this, okay? Give yourself a minute of just practicing this going back and forth. Remember to take a little bit of rest in between. And it's good to every time you do your own practice, give yourself these little sessions to practice your more difficult poses or poses that maybe take a little bit more out of you. Remember to breathe. And if you're done and you feel like you're okay, just come into a child's pose.
All right. So that's all meat and child's pose. <clears throat> Coming to our active child's pose, hands in front of us. Getting a nice stretch of the shoulders. <clears throat> now we're gonna really start to restore the body a little bit. I'm gonna start first just by raising, coming to our tabletop, widening our child's pose slightly with the knees. And then from here, we're gonna place our right hand to the middle of the mat. Inhale, raise the left arm up, get a nice side twist. And exhale, bring that left arm, thread the needle through, keep the palm facing up towards the ceiling, and drop down with your weight into that left shoulder. Breathe here. If this feels okay, you can bring that right arm away, tuck it behind your back. Rest here for five more breaths. Good, slowly release, bring the right arm over, place it down onto the floor, press yourself up, and the left arm in, right arm in, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, so nice and easy, we're going to place the left arm to the center, inhale, raise the right arm up, a nice big stretch. Three, two, and one, and then cross that right arm in, palm facing towards the ceiling, shoulder down, and bring that left hand up if you like, and resting here, five breaths. Good. And whenever you feel you're ready, you can slowly press up and back to our tabletop. Okay, now we're going to do a similar thing that we did for the shoulders, now for the hips. And we're going to come into our pigeon poses. So tuck your toes, go into a downward facing dog just briefly. Inhale, raise that right leg up, bend the right knee, bring the right knee behind the right hand, right ankle behind the left hand. Dropping slowly down into that hip, keeping this foot pointed or bent towards the front of the room or the mat, coming slowly onto your elbows, untucking your back toe when you feel comfortable, and resting on that cross leg. Now, if you want to deepen your pigeon, you can bring that foot closer to a 90 degree angle. If you want to make your pigeon a bit easier, you can bring that heel closer to your groin. If you feel like you need something for that back hip that is lifting up off of the ground, you can bring a block or a cushion to help make this a lot better for your hip. Whatever works for you. Breathe here. Relax, chest down towards the ground. If you want to go even deeper, you can just bring your whole body down. And be here for five more breaths. Good. 
Fusion foam. So when you remove any blocks that you might have, walk your hands back up, tuck that back toe, lift the back knee, step that back foot back into downward dog, walk it out a little bit before we go into the other side. All right, let's move it to the other side. So inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bring that left knee behind the left hand, left foot behind the right hand. Slowly coming down into that back knee and gently allowing yourself to sink into this pigeon pose. Doing the same thing as you did the other side. So making it deeper if you need it and using the block if you need to use the block. Resting in your pigeon pose until you feel more comfortable to go deeper and deeper. Three more breaths here. Final breath, slowly start to walk yourself back, remove any blocks if you have. Come into the back toes, raise that back knee, shift your weight upward, step that left foot back into a downward facing dog. Stay in this downward dog just for five breaths. Two. And one. Slowly coming down onto your knees. Crossing your ankles. Rolling into a seated position. Straightening your legs out in front of you. Pointing the T's up to the ceiling. Chest up nice and open, and relax, breathe. Bring your hands to your side, press up slightly through the chest, Dandasana or Staff Pose. Getting a little bit of posture in the spine, just bring us into a more grounded movement. Good, to begin with, we're gonna start just by bringing that right foot the inside of the left thigh, turning to face our navel towards the front toes. Inhale, raising the hands up and exhale, folding forward over that left foot. Inhaling and exhaling, just deepening the posture. Breathe here. Two more breaths. Again, you want to make sure that your chest is going towards your shin, your stomach towards your thigh, that your shoulders aren't conked upwards, that they're facing forward. Two and one. Slowly release. We're just going to swap sides. So get a nice little swap. Left foot tucked into the right thigh, aiming that navel at the right toes. Inhale, exhale, folding forward over that right leg. Shoulders nice and parallel. And then slowly with each exhale, allowing yourself to sink deeper and deeper into this posture. Breathe. Janu Shirsasana. Head to knee pose. Variation three. Relax. Three more breaths. Two, and one, slowly release, good, we're going to bring the feet together, come into a nice and deep bound angle pose, different to the one we did in the beginning, let's bring the heels closer in, allowing for the knees to drop, 
And if your knees feel really painful here, then you can put blocks under your knees like this. Otherwise, just keep your knees as they are and slowly using your elbows, just gently start to encourage them down. Posture to the spine, chest nice and open. Five more breaths. Four, three, final three breaths. Inhale, exhale, see how deep you can fall forward. Two, and one. Bringing the knees up, straightening the legs, finding your Dandasana once again. We're going to come into a Paschimottanasana, intense forward fold. Inhale, raise the hands up. Exhale, reaching forward. My chest stays open. My stomach is going towards my thighs. I see if I can grab the outside of my feet, my toes, or my ankles, whatever is allowed. If you need to bend your knees, bend your knees slightly just so you can get a stretch of the hamstrings. If you want to deepen the stretch, you can put blocks in front of your feet and reach for that with your legs straight. Whatever is working for you, as long as you're not curving in the spine and feeling the stretch predominantly in your hamstrings. Breathe here for five breaths. Four. Three. Two. And one, slowly release. I'm gonna do a nice spinal twist now, taking the left leg, crossing it over the right. You can keep this leg straight, or if it is capable for you, you can bend that right knee and cross it underneath you. From here, you're gonna inhale, open up your chest. Left hand goes up, reach behind you, keeping your spine nice and postured. Right elbow up, pressing into the left knee, inhale. Exhale, spinal twist. Going as deep as you need to go. Try and look over that left shoulder, pressing with the right elbow. And if this is too difficult for you, you can also just hold on to the knee and pull. Right? Chest is up. Our navel is being sucked in to make it smaller, to give more space for the twist. And every exhale, we go a little bit deeper. Three more breaths here. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Good, slowly release. Come into a small little counter twist on the other side. Release that. We're gonna swap our legs. So there's two ways we can do this. You can simply just swap, or you can do a fun little twist where you go over to the right side, you keep moving, keep your feet where they are, and then you swap over to the other side. Whatever is more exciting for you, and if you get the first one mingled up, that's eh, okay, you'll do it right the next time. So keep that right leg in, tucked with the bottom foot towards your buttocks, right knee up, sitting nice and tall, inhale, raise the right arm up, reach it behind you, left elbow out, placing into that right knee, inhale, exhale, twist. One more time, inhale, and exhale, twist. Five more breaths here. Remember, we're stretching with the inhale and we're twisting with the exhale. Inhale, exhale, twist. Three more times. In, exhale. In, and exhale. In, and exhale. Good, slowly release. Small little counter twist on the other side. Legs out in front of you. We're going to do our final pose before going into our Shavasana. Small little back bend. So lying on our back, bring your feet 
towards your buttocks, heels touching, knees parallel, hands on the mat beneath you. And we're going to inhale, press the hips up into Setu Bandhasana or bridge pose. Stay here for five breaths. Squeeze at the glutes, raise the pelvis up. Four, three, two, and one. Release down. Good. We're going to do this one more time for 10 breaths this time. Find a little bit of effort. Big breath in. Inhale, raise the hips up, hold. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release down. Beautiful. Now, if there's any final poses you would like to do for yourself, go for it. I personally like to go into a little bit of a happy baby here. Just get a nice little bit of opening, bring my knees towards my armpits, or whatever feels good for you. Rock a little bit back and forth. Breathe. Good. And whenever you feel like it, you slowly start to lie down. Placing your hands at your side, feet at your side, relaxing your whole body down, coming into your Shavasana. So stay in your Shavasana for a few moments. I want you to start to let go. Take a few seconds for yourself. Let your breath go. Let this practice go. Feel your shoulders becoming nice and heavy into the ground. Feeling your hips becoming heavy. Knees becoming heavy, everything sinking deep into the ground. Feel your spine aligned. And feel yourself falling into a place of peace and relaxation. And bring up that intention one more time. Let that intention start to flower in your heart. Let it start to blossom in your breath. And let this practice be an embodiment of that intention of joy, love, happiness, peace, whatever it was. And just rest in that embodiment, rest in a cocoon of your own creating, a cocoon of all of your favorite feelings, sensations, a cocoon of peace and stillness, just for a few more moments. Now feel free to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you like after this video has ended. So you can just stay where you are if you feel like you would like to finish now. 
You can gently start to feel the sensations in your fingertips and in your toes. Start to move very, very slowly, very gently, very easily coming up. Start to stretch out. Start to wiggle yourself like you're waking yourself up for the first time today. Let every movement be a moment of joy and happiness and an expression of relaxation and peace. Roll onto your favorite side and gently push yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Keeping your eyes closed. Take a few moments to meditate. To just be in the moment, to be present. Without thinking of anything, allow for free meditation. Just in our last few moments of silence. And then for those of you sitting with me, you can slowly, slowly bring your hands to your chest. Give it a nice little rub. Take a deep inhale. Place your hands over your eyes. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly start to open up your eyes with a smile. Namaste. My name is Cody. Thank you so much for joining me on this practice today. And I'll see you next time. Have a beautiful day. Peace out. Mm -hmm.